So I'm going to review today the Ubiquiti Nano Station uh, Loco M5. Now these are 5 gigahertz, 150 plus megs used for wireless networking, specifically bridging for site to site locations. I will link to the uh, site for the specs. They claim they have a 10 kilometer range. They're powered by their Air Max software, window, wall mount, accessory available, uh, PoE mounting ties, indoor or outdoor. So pretty neat little device. They're really small. This is what really got me when we ordered them is I couldn't believe just how small they were. So in the box we have the nano station itself and I'm gonna do this. I love doing this. Oh yeah. All right, it is officially open now. These models have one network jack underneath here. Reset button, not much there. They have uh, in the box instructions. It tells you how to plug them in. The instructions are for uh, two different models. The other model that has the two network for the secondary hookup. Your standard ubiquity brick inside for PoE. Standard power cord. And a large zip tie. So you can mount this, it's made to be mounted to like a pole. You can get a PVC pipe or however you want to mount these up. Then you've got a little slot here to slide the zip tie through to secure them on there. Um, ideally, you could install this really anywhere uh, on a small pole on top of the roof because they're designed to be line of sight. So if you're bridging two network locations together, you got to do it line of sight. So uh, let's dig into the software now. So once you get the Ubiquiti unboxed and ready to be plugged in, you go to 192.168.1.20 because that is the default IP that they all ship with. When you're setting these up, make sure not to plug in both at the same time because you'll have an IP conflict with these. The password and username is UBNT. It does say that in the little cool book they gave us. We're going to log in and we're in. It does recommend right away that I change the administrator password. We're not going to do that at the moment. So to get this set up in bridge mode, the first thing we're gonna do is go over to the network settings, make sure it's in bridge, which is the default. Configuration is simple. Static, and we're gonna change the static IP. Now my IP address range on my network is not uh, in the one series, it is in the three, so we're gonna do three, and two, four, eight is available. The other one we've already programmed at two, four, nine. All right, we'll go change and it'll restart. And apply. Going to go ahead and load the firmware updates on these. They're pretty easy to load firmware updates on. Just check, agree, and the update. All right, now that I've got these both up to date, both programmed with IP addresses that put them in the same network segment and separated from my physical network as in they bridge the network, but they're not on exactly the same network. I'm explaining that a little bit more in a second here. So they're configured. You have to set up one as a station and the other one has to be set up as a wireless access point. Now, the reason for that is one has to basically act as a client and one has to act as the transmitter. So you're taking the two of them and putting them together. They can't both be in the same mode. You can like send or receive and it creates the wireless link between these two. So we created a network called LTS test and we created a common password, which I can show we just made it secret one, two, three. So we can put these two networks together. And then on the other side, where it acts as a station, which is select and client, we can scan and select. It's got a tool here, and it finds the network. And this is how you can do, and this is how you can lock to this AP. And what you do is it locks to the access point. It locks by MAC address. That way, nothing can interfere there. And that's a good security standpoint of it because you don't want this to possibly someone spoof in between. It's would be able to get right in between the network and join it as well. Granted, they'd have to crack the WPA and the AES, but still, it's best to as much security as possible when you're setting these up. So this locks the two together. And once they're locked together, and the, like I said, the default networking mode is bridged, this acts as a logical piece of your network. So it really is the same for one that's plugged in from one switch to a switch at the other end a logical segment of your network as if a network cable was ran right between them. And you can pass all your traffic, your DHCP traffic, everything. 
So this is great for small networks. If you have a company that has building A and building B has three computers and they just want them on the same network, that's great. Building three has 20 computers, that's great. But you start, you gotta think, all the ARPing back and forth kind of creates a problem. This is where these are really cool. Without having to get another device for the routing, these support more than bridge mode. They support router and Soho router mode. And what these do is the Soho router is a little bit feature rich than just the routed mode and it has a few more things in it, but it works like a standard router with the DHCP server, port forwarding, multicast, all the regular options, even creating different DMZs. And this actually has VLAN options too. So you could even route uh, your network and route different VLANs across one wireless bridge between the two of these. So we're not gonna get into every little networking detail, but for simplicity, it does bridge mode, needs something a little bit more complicated. Uh, so the two networks stay segment, you can go into the routed mode and do that. So that's as easy as there to set up for getting them tied together. You select it, you put the password in, you do the site scan and they're done. And in here, it tells you the link quality. There's tools to do some speed testing and let me show this one here. This one's an access point mode. So it tells you the quality transmit and uh, noise floor. Now let's say we want to do a speed test. That's actually right here. So we'll go speed test. And we're on 248. So we're going to select 249 and actually can see other devices and lets you log into them and directly run the speed test. So if you want to do a direct speed test between the two devices, you do this and it's going to push data between them and see what the maximum throughput is between these devices. Now we don't have a great deal of distance. We just got them in separate locations in the building. So they're, they're pretty well linked together right now. Now this actually has traffic shaping as well. And it's got a warning that comes up here at the bottom that says warning that if you have traffic shaping, it will skew these results, which is still pretty cool. I mean, it's, it's telling you and warning you that, and it's amazing that these little devices that are reasonably inexpensive. I mean, this is the, the nano station M fives and they have all this high end features built right in. So total is a uh, 196.3 megs, just pretty amazing. That's uh, for an inexpensive wireless. They have, as you pay more for some of the ubiquity equipment, uh, they have higher throughputs and things like that. But for most clients, this is simple. The one that this uh, is going to be installed in tomorrow, that is more than adequate. They only have three computers and in their other building that they need to bridge over. A couple other little features that are neat. So you have uh, naming, check now, automatic firmware update. We covered the firmware, how to do that. Um, this is kind of scary. It lets you uh, disable the reset button. So that's kind of strange, but I guess you don't want anyone going to there. You can reboot, download, you can download and back up configuration. So this is kind of nice if you put these up there and let's say one gets hit by lightning and you have a configuration backed up, go buy another one, push the configuration right up to it. Um, has a ping watchdog, so you can turn this on SNMP for monitoring. And this is kind of novel. They have these LEDs on the back. So when you're pointing them at each other, and you can look at the LEDs and kind of gauge and go, okay, the, they'll go higher and higher with the four LEDs. You can actually set the thresholds on the LEDs for what type of signal ratio that each one should light up at. I thought that was pretty novel. They, they come with these as the default, but you can fine tune that. Now it also has what's called the antenna alignment tool. So you can just pull this up and it has a little pop-up window here. Uh, and then you can have a beep to help when you're pointing them at each other. So if you have your laptop sitting there and you're doing the aiming, uh, it can beep at different rates to tell you that it's linked. So another tool in here that I'm not real sure how to read, but is pretty neat is the air view. I'll show you how this launches. It is a spectrum analyzer and can tell you the spectrums, power levels and noise floor uh, and how what type of interference is on there. So I thought this was kind of novel that it had this in here. Like I said, I can't, I'm not the best at reading all the details to you, but it is one more thing that they had uh, that I thought was pretty amazing that's in these little devices. 
So I was pretty impressed with these Ubiquiti Nanostation M5s. They were only, uh, I bought them for $62.95 over on Amazon to pick them up. They're relatively inexpensive, pretty amazing uh, amount of features that you're getting at a device that's less than $100. So if you're looking for an inexpensive way to bridge two areas, areas together with these outdoor antennas, these are definitely a great choice. They took only about, I don't know, five, 10 minutes to get set up. Longer, longest part of the whole setup process was to update the firmware. The only problem I ran into is occasionally when running the uh, tool that they had here called the AirView, the uh, spectrum analyzer tool, that did seem to once in a while cause the station to lock up, which kind of worried me. I had to reboot it. It didn't do it every time. I just was able to make it happen twice. Uh, other than that, they, they work really, really well. Thank you.